What's up guys, today we're going to be looking at how to configure and use Canenable Sniffer. If you have not yet downloaded Canenable, please see my last video on a detailed guide into installing this program. Now without further ado, let's take a look at the sniffer. So, once you have Can Enable downloaded, simply come over to the Sniffer tab and once you click on it you should, you should have this grid like format and you might have your gateway here, maybe not. Uh, so what a lot of beginners get wrong is that they don't properly configure Can Enable to their computer so it starts acting up and it doesn't work properly. So let's actually press configure here and you should get a couple different uh, devices that you can select here. You might just have one, you might have two, or you might have more than me. but you should see an IP address on one of these. Um, I know that there is a problem and some people do get zeros on all their devices. And I'll show you how to fix that in a second. So if you do see all zeros on your, on your devices here, what you're gonna actually have to do is you're gonna have to go down to the corner of your computer and you're gonna basically right click on the whatever you're using, uh, Ethernet I help and you should be able to open up a settings menu like this. If you can't, just search it in with Cortana. Come down to the bottom here and you're gonna to go to Network and Sharing Center. Now bring this up here and um, you're gonna to go to Change Adapter Settings. And so what you should see is what you're using for the connection here and I'm using my Ethernet that's built into my uh, desktop here. So come down to Properties and once you open up this Properties menu, this may look a little in intimidating at first, but you'll get to know it and uh, press on Internet Protocol version 4 and what you're going to do is press Properties and so it should be on Obtain IP Address Automatically so that should always be on and also you're going to come down to Advanced and you're going to go to DNS and just make sure that these boxes are clicked here um, because that will automatically assign the DNS uh, registration here so press OK OK and close so that should be set and now once you um, go back onto your thing just press cancel and configure you should have a device set up and now if you do use something like a VPN like me and you have more than one of these uh, connections or IP addresses and you don't know which one to use you're actually just gonna come down to and open up a command prompt window and just search IP config and you're gonna see here uh, I can see that mine ends in 32 and that's without my VPN turned on. So I'm going to use that one now because I don't have my VPN turned on. So I'm just going to click it. And then on these boxes right here. So if you're using wireless, which I strongly um, don't recommend using on Can Enable, but if you are, you can't really have uh, this. You have to have this checked. But if you aren't, don't check this because this basically allows all the packet flow on our network to come to your computer. So everything is going to be routed through your computer, which is what you want when you're using the sniffer. So let's just press apply here. So once you have everything configured properly to your computer and you have the right IP address set, come up here to this what's called the sniffer and hover over and you can see that you can start or stop the sniffer. And so you should click this and you'll see that that's pushed in now. And now when you click on this box and press the blue plus, you should be able to start this. And now you can set a certain IP range that you're scanning for. And this will just scan for all the devices that are currently on your network right now. So I'm just going to say all hosts in my subnet and I'm going to press OK. And now as you can see, we got a couple devices here. Some of them it shows the fingerprint of the device, others it can't be as specific. But as we move along to the APR poisoning tab here, so what the APR poisoner actually does is it poisons the network in a way that all packets are going to be sent through the computer so it can actually be captured in passwords or HTTP posts, uh, certificates, and all sorts of things that are passing through the network that you might want to snoop around in. And so when you go back to this APR tab up here, you're going to actually be able to monitor similar to uh, application called Wireshark all the IP traffic and that's actually uh, a an effective way of finding out where uh, an IP a public IP address is coming from and where it's going to and so you can see the packet flow both ways 
All right, to actually monitor the flow of packets across your network, you're gonna to need to come into the APR tab. Make sure you're on APR up here. Click on this uh, box right here, this upper box, the blue plus, and click on your gateway, which is gonna end in 01, or it's gonna be the very first number on your subnet, so that might be, start with a 10, might start with uh, 256, it just really depends on your network. And if you want to take all, if you want to monitor all the traffic flow of all the devices on your network currently, you can just highlight everything and press OK. And now when you start, you come up here to this uh, start stop APR button, just press that. It's going to start poisoning, which is actually layman's terms for uh, redirecting all the packets to your computer and so as you can see the status is fully routed which means that all packets are being sent through my computer then to the router I'll give you guys a quick visual here and so this is um, actually an interesting place because as you can see these are the addresses that are on my network and they're communicating to these public addresses and so a lot of people may use cane enable uh, sniffing abilities for things like sniffing IPs over console and um, I don't really agree with that but um, of course you can use it for that and so if you were to do that you would have to stop this um, remove all these then essentially you would do the same thing you would come up here, you'd go to your gateway, except whatever your console was, say it was Xbox, um, and say it was on 13, or 13, and you pressed OK, then you would do it specifically on the packet flow of 13, and you'd start it, and the IPs that your Xbox was communicating with, so anyone that was in your party, uh, specifically the host of your game or the host of your party, will be on the top because that's the most active connection that there's going to be and so you have to be on the look for that so this should be their IP whoever you're in the party with or whatever and so if you were still to say monitor your network and um, you were trying to sniff specific things off the network um, as in the certificates you things will start to pop up here that are going on on your network obviously there's Google requests and stuff just because I have a couple tabs open and HTTPS requests uh, not much right now because I haven't really been running for very long and if someone was to enter in a password um, they don't have an HTTPS uh, version and that's just because um, can enable is really limited um, when doing their man in the middle attacks they don't have a uh, special software called SSL strip which actually enables um, a whole bunch of stuff that you pro you guys probably don't care too much about but um, anyways if anybody enters a password on an HTTP website which is a um, less secure protocol yet still common protocol um, when entering stuff in on a website um, their password is actually going to come up here and it's going to come up with the URL of the website and um, you'll be able to see everything that they enter in so that's pretty interesting and so um, I actually forgot to add a little section into my general cane enable video and so I'm actually just going to show you guys uh, with wireless cards how to use the wireless section and I know I bash on the wireless uh, card users quite a bit because it's not very useful in cane enable but um, I will show you guys how it works so of course come over to the wireless tab and now you're gonna have to click on the device that you that you configured up at the top here so mine happens to be this one right here press active scan of course make sure that you're connected to the Wi-Fi because sometimes that happens um, press active scan and now sometimes you may only get one network right here and that's fine just press stop active scan again and it should pop up yep there we go and as you leave this running more and more networks as they um, ping back and forth from your wireless card will pop up just like right now and so basically to decrypt this to say um, you can see here this is obviously my network it's got the 
the um, closest signal here, and uh, the furthest being the highest because it's the um, takes more energy to get here. And um, what you can actually do with this is, if I were to say want to crack this in another program that could crack WPA2 encryption or whatever you're cracking, you would press export and save it into a folder and work your way from there. But other than that, wireless doesn't really have a place in Kane Enable. So I hope you guys took away something in this video and you'll use it as much as possible. Hope you enjoyed the video in general and until next time, this is Lucid Tech Security Tutorials. Thanks for watching.